if we want to graph functions, okay, there's lots of different types of functions we could be graphing, and I've been showing you in some of the earlier videos how to do that. But uh, just to show you, uh, we could do linear, we can do quadratic, square root, sine, reciprocal, we can do tons of other ones. I'm just showing you a few examples here. But if we want to actually graph them, uh, it's important to try to think about what we're actually doing here. So what I often do is I'll take the f of x and I'll convert it, I'll make it a y. That just makes things a little bit easier. So in other words, if I have a linear function, so something that's like f of x equals, I don't know, like ax plus b. This is actually what we call the general form of a linear equation. Remember this right here. Oh, actually, wait, instead of a, some people actually call it m. Most people have actually learned it like this. It's called mx plus b. m is the slope, sometimes called the gradient. Um, I went to school in the U.S. and Canada. We always called it the slope, at least where I learned it. But uh, in Europe, uh, they always seem to call it the gradient. So either way, slope or gradient, that's M. X just remains there. That's just always sitting there. And B is the Y-intercept. In other words, where it crosses the Y-axis. So in this case, then, if I want to graph F of X equals 2X minus 3. Well, the first thing I would do is replace the f of x with just a y. Right? That's what most people are used to graphing. y equals 2x minus 3. Now, how do I actually do this? I can actually do a big graph here. I've got an x and I've got a y. So what I want to do then is uh, take a look at this. This right here tells me that the y-intercept, I'll just be short form here, I'll say y-int, is negative 3. Right? That's the y-intercept. And the thing in front of x, which is the slope, that's going to be, or the, sorry, gradient, it's going to be equal to 2. So then let's take a look at how to do this then. That means, that, well, I may as well just start uh, putting some points here. I'm doing a really lousy sketch here. Hopefully you have better paper and you can actually make this look much, much better than I can. But in any case, I'm just graphing a few numbers here. 1, 2, 3, and maybe negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Just to give me some idea what's going on here. Now my y-intercept is negative 3, which means I know that my graph crosses the y-axis here at negative 3. Now a gradient of 2 tells me that for every one point I go over, I always have to go up or down by the gradient. So in this case, from here, I go over 1, and what do I do? I go up 2, because the gradient is positive. So I go over 1, up 2. I'm there. Then I go over 1, up 2. I can go over 1, up 2. So then, ideally, I would connect these together with a perfect, nice, straight line. Whoops, you can see I'm not the best uh, line drawer here. There's a reason I'm not an artist. But uh, hopefully you can see then that uh, this is the case. Uh, maybe what I should do is actually undo this and try to draw myself a nice straight line. Oh boy, I hope this works. Yeah, that sort of looked okay, didn't it? So that'll be my straight line. Keep in mind though, I can always extend my line, right? This line doesn't just go here. It keeps going forever up here and it keeps going forever down here. But this suffices. This is enough. So that's a linear function. Now what about a quadratic function? Well that, the general form, looks like this. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's how any old quadratic can always be written. Now remember now, a and b and c are just constants. They're just numbers. Okay, so it can be anything. I can make a equal to 5 and b can be 0 and c can be 12 or something like that. Okay, so that's how we can do a quadratic. So if I want to graph f of x equals x squared, that's the easiest thing ever, right? I just do y equals x squared, and then I can just draw that. Now hopefully you remember how it is that uh, parabolas go. Uh, well, this is a parabola, this is quadratic. So because it's x squared, that means it opens either up like this or down like this. Now, because the number in front of it is positive, it opens upwards. And an x squared follows, it goes exactly through uh, the point zero, 0, and then it goes up like this. This is what y equals x squared looks like. That's what f of x is like here in this case. Maybe I should go back and be a little bit more careful and actually label this is f of x. That's what this is. 
Okay, I've drawn f of x equals, I wonder I can even say 2x minus 3. That's what I've drawn here. That's f of x is 2x minus 3. Over here, I've drawn f of x equals x squared. Now, we can do more than that, though. We can also do the square root function, which I've shown you before. So that one goes like this. This is just like saying y equals square root of x. I can do that on my calculator. But if you know how these things work, this goes like this. Something like this. So it starts off 0, 0, goes up and over, and keeps going up. It goes up actually higher, higher. It just doesn't go that fast. It's not like something that goes straight up like this. It goes up, but it curves downwards. So that is f of x equals square root of x. These are important graphs to know what they look like without a calculator. Uh, now another one, sine or cosine, this is a bit tougher. A lot of students have trouble with this, and I'll be doing another series of videos uh, that actually show this in much more detail. But if you want to do f of x equals sine x, or y equals sine x on your calculator, you notice I put x here, I said I only want to draw x between 0 and 2 pi. That's what this means. This means I'm doing this in radians. If you've never heard of radians before, then don't panic or freak out, because uh, this is something you can learn about. And in the section I'm going to do about trigonometry, we're going to cover that in a lot more detail. So what I'm going to do then is show you how to do this graph here. So what I would do is uh, y equals sine of x. It's drawn between 0 and 2 pi, and it turns out it's really easy to draw um, a graph of y equals sine x. All you have to do is start off at 0, 0 here, make it go up, and then make it go down, and make it go back again. All you have to do then is know that uh, well, graph of sine x does this between 0 and 2 pi. This, by the way, is 1. This, by the way, is negative 1. This value here is halfway between 0 and 2 pi, so that's pi. And it turns out this is pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 2. Now, this looks confusing. That's okay. It keeps going, by the way, forever. But I said I only want to draw it between 0 and 2 pi. So in that sense, then, it's okay to draw it just like this. Oops. So this is a graph. It's nice to know how sine goes. By the way, if you wanted f of x equals cos of x, it does the same thing as the other one did, except it starts up high and goes down like this. And this is 2 pi. This is still 1, and this is still negative 1. So a graph of cosine compared to sine, they actually are the same thing. It turns out because this keeps going forever, and this one here actually keeps going forever, and backwards as well. So they both are curvy like this. In fact, we often call these sinusoidal, and the reason we call it that is because they follow a sine wave like this. So that's a good graph to know how to work with. The last one to know how to work with is the reciprocal function, okay, or a reciprocal graph. Now what that does is this is something that, um, well, we can just learn this graph, actually. Maybe it's easier just to show you. So y, uh, 1 over x, it does something like this. It goes like this, and it goes like this. Now what's neat about this is it's not defined at x equals 0. Imagine you try to put 0 here. 1 divided by 0, it turns out is, well, it doesn't work. It's If you look at this graph here, it goes way up to infinity and down. This, by the way, is an example of a graph that has uh, something weird for the domain. The domain, you could say, is x cannot be 0. That's it. It can be anything else, but it can't be 0. Do you notice here? If x is negative lots, it's OK. But as you're over here, x can't be 0. It goes either way up high or 2 down low. Um, and it turns out it's not defined here. It turns out the range does something similar. If you scan from bottom to top, if you look, we call this here an asymptote. There's a place here where it can't reach. There's a place here where the x's can't reach. We often draw them with dotted lines. So here we'd say that can't be 0. So these graphs that I've shown you, if I go back here, the linear, quadratic, square root, sine or cosine, or reciprocal, those are all very helpful graphs to know how to do or know a rough idea what they look like without using a calculator to graph them. These are really useful later on in order to do transformations and to know actually how to do these. So I strongly suggest you learn how to do linear, quadratic, square roots, sines, and reciprocals. Those are nice to know how to do. Okay, so there was quadratic, there was square root, there was sine and cosine, and there was reciprocal.